What's up, guys? F Focus, and we back on some escape from Tarkov. Now, every time there's a wipe in Tarkov, we see it time and time again. All the big time streamers that streamed it once before get back on it and stream it just to see what the new content is because usually with the big wipe on Tarkov, it brings a lot of content. So they like to always come back and check out the game. Now, with this large time streamer, or streamers that get on Tarkov, it always brings a whole heap load of new players. And I guarantee about 80% of those players quit playing Tarkov within the first couple days or at least first week. Uh, and that's just because the game is just too unforgiving. It's just too challenging. Um, it's it's the most hardcore shooter I've, I've ever played. Um, so this guide really isn't going to be for all those advanced, experienced Tarkov players, all you veterans out there, everybody that we love. You know, It's not really going to be for you guys, all the stuff you're going to know. But that small 20% of players that still play it after that first week that try and continue to play it, um, this is going to be for you guys. It's going to be the top 10 tips post-wipe, or I guess how to survive post-wipe. Um, because every time you start fresh, it's so difficult. But if you do start at a wipe, this is this is the video for you. I hope you guys tune in before the wipe gets too far in. Um, the wipe's not out yet, but when it does get here. Uh, mainly just because it's... It's going to help you when everybody else is on the same play field as you. So if you come in, you know, two months after wipe or a month after wipe, a couple weeks after wipe, it's not really going to be the same. Uh, but anyway, without further ado, let's jump right into it. All right. So starting this list off at tip number one. And again, this doesn't go in any specific order. Tip number one is not the best or the worst. They're all just kind of scattered around. But starting off tip number one, start hoarding. Won't stress it enough. Um, you need to start hoarding certain things. Um, like optics, especially optics, uh, red dots and scopes. You need to start hoarding those because either one, they're unobtainable because of your level and reputation or two, they're just too damn expensive and you just don't want to drop the money on them. Um, PSOs are a big one for me because I love running SKSs. So that's, this is certain things that you want to hoard. Um, if I get AKSs or even stuff like that early wipe, I, sometimes I'll use them, but a lot of times I'll just sell them and I'll try and get my hands on something different. Um, really, there's you you have your own preference on what you want to hoard i don't hoard uh i really never hoard suppressors because i they don't really matter that much to me but i know a lot of people that do hoard suppressors um, i don't hoard grips or anything else of that sort but I, like i said i know a lot of people that do so whatever your preference is that you want to hoard maybe you want to hoard all the attachments for guns um like a specific set of guns go for it um but the biggest thing i like to hoard for quest items because i i definitely look to the future is i like to hoard for therapist and for prepper and that's it i don't i don't really hoard for anything else um, mainly just because prepper i like to get my hands on bp 762 bp uh, that's the best armor piercing rounds uh so however the, how fast i can get that is the best for me um so i hoard quest items for him um, but mainly i hoard quest items for therapist too like all the cans of tushanka so you don't really know this stuff if you're, if you're a new player um, but if you start early enough and you just kind of hoard certain items like that or maybe you can look at some stuff i can even do a separate video if you guys want on uh, the best items to start hoarding early obviously before the wipe comes out and hell the wipe might not be out for another fucking year um, but anyway tip number one start hoarding tip number two Mosin Meta. I cannot say it enough. Mosin Meta. This is the first time that we're going to have a wipe with the Mosin being available at level 1. So it's going to be total anarchy. It's going to be fucking crazy. So be prepared for that. Either join the Mosineers, which most of us, I guarantee almost all of us will join the Mosineers. Uh, or your second option, learn to counter them. And I have a couple things I'm going to help you guys counter. Um, there's two things you can do. One, ambush two shotguns that's how you counter the mosins um and it's it's really it can even be a 133 if i'm honest but a 153 or saiga is recommended i should say but you can do whatever you want those are the guns i like to use and when i say ambush i mean kind of post up and wait uh because mosineers just rush they're just crazy batshit crazy people that rush um some people are play the mosin right but most of the time they just rush around and just try and kill things um, or just rush around and use the Mosin as protection. So if you set up ambushes and almost just post and camp, then you should build a fuck them up, no problem. So, Or shotguns, that's your next option. You can rush with them, and I guarantee you, you will win. Now, tip number three, shotties. I know I just mentioned this in the last tip, but it's it deserves its own tip. Um, every time, uh, at, right at post-wipe, as soon as the wipe comes out, Everybody's wanting to get their hands on all these fully automatic weapons. Now, I do believe this meta is going to be different with that Mosin, like I said. So, I cannot stress it enough, since everyone's going to be doing Mosin meta, 
you need to pick up shotguns. Um, unless you want to join the Mosin Meadow, which is fine. Hell, I love doing it because it's challenging. Uh, but with everyone being low geared, it may not be as challenging and fun. I don't know yet. We'll see. But shotguns. Scavs always have them. So even if you join your scav, if you have your, play your scav, and you get a shotgun, just keep it, man. If it's a 133, always, I mean, of course, drop it for a Saiga or a 153, in my opinion. 153s are fantastic. Sometimes you'll even get a, a you know, scav that has an 8-round mag. And early, that is huge. Um, no one's going to be rocking armor. And if they are rocking armor, it's going to be uh, either 3M, PAKA, or UN armor. And the shotgun shreds all of that, man. The shotgun will fucking destroy it. And another shotgun that most people overlook because it's total shit is actually the Taz. And the Taz is really good at post wipe. Um, so shotguns, believe it or not, just decimate early wipe. And the shotguns this past couple patches um, have improved significantly. I mean, they do so much damage even with armor on. Before, if you threw on some packer or something, they would block pretty much everything and you could just walk away with shotgun shots. Now, with the spread of buckshot and the certain pellets hitting your face and one-shotting you, even at crazy distances, shotguns are strong, man, so I definitely recommend picking up shotguns. Tip number four, search everything. In specific, search for keys. Um, I will be doing some shoreline guides because I know a lot of people actually do enjoy when I play shoreline and getting shoreline keys early You're pretty much set for the entire Tarkov wipe um, But basically right now we're just going to be focusing on customs because that's kind of what I said uh, So there's one area in particular I want to focus on and that's dead scav warehouse You got two ammo boxes up top You got this little couch with a dead scav that actually has checkpoint key that spawns And then you have factory key that has a chance of spawning inside the lockers most people know this, but there is a chance for it to spawn there. And then other keys to spawn, so you get multiple keys, not just factory. So always check dead scav. If you spawn on boiler side, always check dead scav. Now, if you spawn inside dead scav warehouse, check it immediately. And then usually get out of there because early wipe people rush this location because it is so powerful with key spawns. Now, you get your hands on checkpoint key early. That's free grenades, even weapons, and special type of ammunition. So it's massive key. Obviously, factory key lets you reposition and change better. Pretty much incognito, just full stealth, which is, I mean, huge in Tarkov. So the next thing I'm going to tell you guys, marked key on customs is really good early. You can get yourself docs folders. You can get yourself key bars, even ammo boxes, and that shit is huge early on. So the faster you get that, the better. Um, and mark key, the best way to get mark key, even factory key, all those keys in general, really, is uh, searching scav bags. A lot of people kind of fell off on this. Um, people don't search scav bags as much as they used to, and I don't know why. Um, basically, I guess mainly because it was customs was so heavily populated that it was dangerous. Uh, but early on, definitely search scavs. I don't say when you kill them, you immediately go up and rush and search them, but don't forget about their bags because that's how I, last wipe i found all like five of my factory keys from scav bags so keep that in mind tip number five no com tax now i know this sounds crazy for some because people like cotton and people that follow cotton they don't actually use com tax but com tax are big man they give you such an advantage whether that's the actual com tax or even you go as far as swordens i mean they give you an upper hand they give you an advantage i'm so obviously with noise so Early on, nobody has contacts, so use this to your advantage. Now, this also, it's double-edged sword. With that comes ambushes, or what some people call them, campers. So there's certain locations that you want to avoid um, without contacts to just rush in there, uh, or it, just pretty much in general for these ambush spots. And that's dorms. Um, outside marked especially is big. People like to camp inside that bathroom right across from marked, just waiting for people to get there early. Um, so they can kill them and reap the rewards after they unlock it. So always check in the bathroom right before you go in there. And uh, usually if you go on third floor, people are laying down right outside Mark, just watching down the hallway. So keep that in mind. That's a big spot. Um, the new construction in that elbow or alley, people like to lay down prone in the back. So that's obviously a big spot. And then uh, the two-story dorms right there next to the double filing cabins. People lay down. These are all ambush spots. I'm trying to help you guys out. And then uh, avoid gas station. Um, the gas station trap, it's not as hard to get out of as you think but it is sometimes difficult if you're a new player if you go inside gas station you can get trapped so i try and tell people avoid this as much as possible if you're new to it and you don't know the pinch points tip number six know your route i just uploaded a video it was supposed to come after this one but i don't want to keep you guys waiting anymore and plus route videos i can keep i can push out and push out and push out because routes always change metas always change so go look at my video on that tip number six route Tip number seven, 
And this is the greatest tip that anybody could ever give you in Tarkov. Any advanced veteran player of Tarkov, all you homeboys out there, respect. All of you guys will tell this tip to every single new player. Don't have gear fear. Just don't have it, man. It's no, it's no need. It's a game after all, okay? So the SA-58 that looks sexy as hell. That M1A that looks fucking just fine. Play with it, man. Take it out and play with it. All those Fast MTs, Armored Rigs, take it. Just take it out. There's no need to just avoid it because it looks good or you go, oh my god, this is an expensive M4. I don't want to take it out and lose it in one raid. Guess what? The more you dwell on it, the more you think about it, the more you're going to lose it and die and lose it. You know what I mean? It, just don't think about it. Just think, oh, it's another gun. I'm going to take it out and have fun with it. It's a good gun. I'm going to take it out and I'm just going to wreck the hell out of this server, this raid. So don't have gear fear. It's really simple. Don't have gear fear. Tip number eight, meds. Okay, I'm gonna tell you guys the best way that you need to med, um, especially if you have AI2s and bandages and stuff to stop the bleeding, you're not really running car med kits or Salua's or IFACs yet, or even Grizzlies. Um, these meds, you obviously have to, to heal your body parts with, but it won't stop the bleeding. It just heals your overall HP. So, with that said, you're gonna have painkillers on you because if you have a black leg or a broken leg or anything like that and you pop pains, it sharpens your vision for one, and it allows you to walk on that fucked up leg. So, if you're getting shot at with leg meta, it doesn't exist, but if you're getting shot at with leg meta, it doesn't exist, like I said, again, I'll say it again, leg meta doesn't exist. If you're getting shot at, then you need to pop your pains first, okay? I see people pop their IFAX, or they pop their cars, or they pop their AI2s first, and they get their leg blacked, and now they're limping. And you can't get behind cover or reposition where you want to if you're limping. So it's pretty much certain death. So if you're starting to get shot at, it's going to be a firefight. I recommend popping pains first. Regardless, even if they don't black your legs or black any part in your body or even fucking hurt you that much. If you pop your pains, you are ready for it. And if you don't need to pop a pain after that because you won the fight, so be it. You just used one pains to essentially save your life. Pop your pains, reposition, take cover, get where you need to go. And then you can start healing if you got fucked up. And if you didn't get fucked up, retaliate and kill it, man. Pains are just a precautionary thing. Use them. Pains first, med later. Tip number nine. Use your scav. Okay? It's free gear. And post-wipe, as soon as the wipe happens, that scav is going to have some juicy gear. Um, you're going to be able to kill some juicy boys with it. And you're going to go out and you're going to fucking wreak havoc on whatever map you decide to play on. So use that scav, and if you die, oh well, guess what, it was free gear anyway. And you go, oh, this is AK-74, I want to take this out. Don't think about it like that. Think about it as, oh, this was gear, I don't give a fuck. I don't even care what this is. If I die with it, oh well, I never had it before, so why do I care if I don't have it now? If you get out with it, you go, oh shit, look at this, I just got an AKM. It's, it's different if you play like you don't care. You'll be a little bit more reckless, but you'll be having fun for one, and two, you won't be setting so much on the fact that you need that gun to take out. Well, like I said, use your scav. It's free gear. And because everyone else is going to be pretty much naked, you're going to be able to rack up a lot of guns, um, a lot of gear, get a lot of profit. So use your scav. Tip number 10, use the right ammunition. And I'll go ahead and give you some pointers right now. Right at post wipe early on, if you get your hands on an AK-74M or you get your hands on anything, honestly, Hollow points, okay? No one's going to be wearing armor. Everyone's going to be running around naked. And even with this Mosin meta, everyone's going to be running around naked anyway with Mosin. So if you have your hands on a fully automatic weapon, um, like an AK-74M or even an AKS-74U, hell, even like an SKS, and you can get your hands on hollow points, you're going to fucking drop them in two shots, okay? It's going to absolutely destroy them, okay? So use hollow points early on, and then you can switch over to a more of an armor-piercing round, but this still does a lot of high damage, because they're only going to be using pack and shit like that, or even UN armor. And then obviously later on in wipe, whenever people are using Gen 4, um, they're busting out the heavy shit, like uh, Carissa armor, then you're going to have to switch it over to some more of a, an armor-piercing round. But as of right now, use them hollow points. Alright fellas, sadly it is that time, we're going to call it here. Uh, this is going to be a normal thing. Uh, like just basically in the future we're gonna be doing this kind of thing a lot tips videos because that's kind of how my channel started so I want to get back into that groove to help out all these new Tarkov players mainly because the game is getting big again especially post wipe it's gonna be massive so with that said I appreciate all you veterans out there that have stuck with my channel respect I cannot thank you guys enough and with that said hit that like button subscribe share if you want to and as always enjoy 
I'm on my own, broken and alone. I feel the rain crashing down. All around this empty town, I'm searching for the lost and found. But you don't care, you're unaware. Keep moving. 